Hello, uh, welcome to today's Alchemy Coffee Break session. Today we will have a look at how we can parse XML files with Alchemy Catalyst and more specifically how we can parse a multilingual XML file. So we'll just have a quick look at the simple parsing interface and then we'll go into a little more details while parsing a file requiring expert support in the parser. So to parse a file with Catalyst to pass an XML file with Catalyst, we need to go first. We need first to have a look at the file and decide what are the items that we want to translate. Now, Catalyst offers an integrated environment to do that. So, if we go into Tools Options, select the Easy Pass section, which is where we define all the passes and customize the passes for Catalyst, we can select the XML based file group and the extension of our um, actual file or files that we will need to put into to insert into Catalyst later on. In this case, let's take XML file. Because this is a new format, we will create a new rule and we'll call it, uh, whoops, let's remove this, multilingual demo. And we will click on the edit method button. So the edit method button will bring this dialog box, which will allow you to specify what are the tags that we want to translate in an XML file. To do that, all I need to provide is a template or an XML file containing the tags of the format I want to translate. Click on Open. By doing so, I immediately get a list of all the tags available in the XML file. Now, the name and the file actually has been immediately selected in the preview area, and clicking on the preview button will populate the bottom two uh, part of the dialog box. The left part will give me a raw XML view, which basically shows you what the file looks like if you were to open it in the text editor, and the right side will show you what Catalyst sees as translatable. So once I've done this, I can now start working on my XML file. The first thing I will do is have a look at the raw XML view and decide mm, this is a tag that needs to be translated, which is the case here for the text tag. I'll find the text tag in my list of tags here above and double click on it. Once I've double clicked on it, it's gone into that green color. It's now considered translatable. If I click on preview, uh, Catalyst will show me that all of the text tags are now considered translatable. This is how we can create uh, what we will call a, a simpler uh, XML parser. Now, simpler might be misleading because obviously you could have a lot of different tags to select and you might have to, you know, take a bit of time to do that. But it is simple in the sense that all you need to do is isolate the tags that need to be translated and simply double click on them to make them available for translation. Now, in our case, if we look a little bit closer at our um, file, we'll notice that actually that text tag, there are four text tags per string. And if we look closer, we can see that, well, they're actually fairly similar, except they're translations of each other. So we don't really show, uh, have a, a word count that is four times the actual word count of our software. What we will need to do is we will need to limit this to one text tag per string. Because we're translating from English into French in this specific case, we will want to isolate the English string so that we can only have the source string as source in RTTK. To do that, we will use uh, expat expressions and the display on condition column in our parser. Actually, let's take a second and have a look at the different columns here in the top area. The first thing, the first column is the the tags. So, you know, any lines here will show you a tag or an attribute, which is an item that could potentially contain translatable content. The second column defines whether we want to use the value of that item as part of, as of our ID. So, as you know, Catalyst always gives an ID to every string. Ticking this box would mean that we will take the value of that item as part of the uh, unique ID we can lock an item. So we may decide to show the text item, but actually we want to lock it. Or maybe we want to show the content of the string ID, but we do want to lock it. If I click on preview, you will see now that you will see this. So you could have information there and it gives you a little bit of, a, um, of context information. 
the row after that defines whether the tag is in line or not, which means do we split segment and this tag or do we consider it to be a formatting tag that should be included inside a large segment. We then have the display on condition and store translation in. We'll come back to them in just a second. And finally, we have the called segment option, which allows me to define that the, seg the segment, the items inside this tag is actually a called. So let, let's pretend I have scripting language in uh, these tags. I am then able to say, well, actually, this is a, a code segment. And I'm going to use one of the um, text-based parsing rules to, to handle this. The most common example would be you have a script segment, a script tag. It contains JavaScript. So we will use the JavaScript uh, parsing rule. And this would mean that the content of my tag will be handled as something that needs to be passed once again. Now, in this case, it's not a code segment. Okay, so these are the different columns, just to show you exactly what each of them do. Back to our example, we have four text items for one string, and we only want one. We need to eliminate all those that are not uh, English. And to do that, what we will do is we'll put a condition saying, well, only take the text item if this, this item, and actually not lang but text, has an LCID item attribute for which the value is 1033. Now, using XPath, this would be expressed as follows. So the at sign for the attribute, and then the name of the attribute, and the expected value. By doing this, what I'm saying is I'm saying, well, look, whenever you find a text item, I want you to make sure that it has an attribute, LCID, and that its value is 1033. In all other cases, whether the LCID has a different value or there is no LCID, we will ignore the text item. And if I click Preview, I now have only one item per string, one text per string, because there's only one 1033 per string. So this, you know, this is a an additional complexity, if you will, an additional flexibility into our parser, which allows you to uh, base your decision whether an, a tag, with decision whether a tag is translatable or not, depending on external factors. No, in this case, it's an attribute, so it's a, it's a, it, kind of an internal factor, but it could also be the attribute of the parent because it is fully expat compliant. I can go anywhere in the file just to make sure that this is, um, you know. This answers my criteria. Okay, so far so good. We've highlighted the text item as translatable. We've removed the ones that should not be translated, as in the translations themselves. But the problem is if, well, problem, yes, in this case, if I was to translate the file as it is now, the translation would come on top of my English item. So it would basically replace IO device in this example here. And my translation would come into uh, the 1033 item, which is not what I want. And this is where the store translation in item will come uh, handy, because it will allow me to give it another expat expression that is going to go from the source item, so from wherever you are in the file, and to bring the translation to another location. So in this case, what I need to do is I need to go up one level, so get out of my text LCID 1033, which I do as follows. And then I need to find another text item to put my translation in. But this text item has to match a specific uh, condition, which is a square bracket. And inside the square bracket, I will say, I want you to have an attribute called LCID. And I want the value to be 1036 because I'm going to translate in French. So click out of there and click on the preview button. And now you will see that basically Catalyst has is matching the source and the target. It's saying, well, look, the source is here and the target is there. Now, in the case of my few first couple of strings, we don't see any difference because the uh, strings are untranslated. But with a bit of luck, I will find a location where the string was translated, is translated in the original file. The advantage of multilingual file is that you can keep translations inside your file. and you only expect to have to add to do, translate the additional items. And here we can see that, you know, there is already a translation, so Catalyst is aware of that. So we can now save 
our rule. And by saving my rule, what I've done is I've basically created a rule in Catalyst. From now on, whenever I get a uh, multilingual.xml file like we've just seen, and I want to translate it, all I need to do is right click, select insert file, point to my file, click on open. Catalyst will ask me the rule to use. I select multilingual demo and my file is now passed and available for translation. So we've read the string from the LCID 1033 and when we extract the file we will put the translation in the relevant um, area of the file. And we can see that some of the strings have been already translated so therefore they appear as a full review. We obviously cannot keep the uh, translation status because those formats are uh, fairly customized. They're usually specific to uh, each customer and therefore we can't really uh, handle all of the logic for the customer. So if it's different, we consider it for review. Once it's been reviewed in the TTK and when you use a leverage, we will move on the status from then on. So this concludes our demonstration and um, as a summary, I just want to, you know, just reiterate, we have a fairly simple interface, especially if your files do not require a conditional or multilingual intervention, in which case you click on items to make them available for translation. If the files do require those kind of more involved uh, configuration, Catalyst offers you the ability to define those. The, op the third option obviously being to select as ev everything as translatable and then lock further down in the in the TTK. You know, we think that the expert is a little bit more efficient. If you have any further questions on, on this topic or on Catalyst itself, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at alchemysoftware.ie. In the meantime, thank you very much for attending this session and have a good day. Goodbye.